I'm so excited to finally be able to make this video. <laughs> hey guys, it's Laurel, and you have just entered the haunted house, and now that you've entered, you can never leave. <laughs> but don't say boo just yet, because we finally can talk about movies and television again. Welcome to the channel if you're new, and welcome back if you've been here before. If you've subscribed to my channel semi-recently, you might not know that a big focus on my channel has always been movies and television. Horror films specifically are one of my special interests, but like movies and TV shows in general are such a big part of my life. And during the SAG strikes, I couldn't talk about like any of it. Like any of it, y'all. And I'm always out here making lists, gratitude lists, favorite things that I've enjoyed lists, etc. And on my monthly favorites, there have been TV shows and movies I haven't been able to talk about because of the SAG strikes. I mentioned in my last favorites video that there are stuff I couldn't talk about because I filmed that before the SAG strike was lifted. And I want to tell you guys about my favorite TV shows and movies that I watched in the past few months while the strike was still happening. It's so funny because I have them on my phone labeled by month because that's how I had it for my monthly favorites videos. But let's get into it. July, I watched a lot of stuff. Like a lot of stuff. First thing on my list in July was a TV show on Netflix called Boo, Bitch. Literally the whole reason I started watching it was because one of the very last shows I was able to talk about before the strike on probably my June favorites was the actress who was in To All the Boys I've Loved, those movies, that series. She's so talented. I saw her in the preview for Boo, Bitch, and I was like, Slay, I gotta watch. Also, the redhead I recognize because I'm pretty sure I follow her on TikTok. I really liked the show because it gave millennial vibes without being too cringy. It was wholesome, it was heart-wrenching, it was funny, it was cute, it was romantic. And everybody's clothes, like the style, you guys know I'm an outfits girly. Everybody was dressed so fun. I loved the color blocking and all of the scenes. Not only that, you give me some creepy shit or some like paranormal shit and I'm in, I am in. And the show's called Boo Bitch because the main character is hit by a car in the first movie and is walking around dead for the whole show. So it's paranormal, it's got ghosty ghosts, okay? It's got seances and weirdo ghost hunters. <laughs> and it's just really cute. And it's definitely a, a show about friendship and like learning about yourself and like going on a journey really like living life and living life to its fullest. And it's only one season, and one thing I love about that is there's so many shows that just keep going, okay? I love a show that gives me just a nice, perfect little ribbon on top at the end, you know? I feel like I was going through like a romantic drought at this time because I, I watched Exo Kitty and then I watched All the Boys Who I've Loved and then I watched Boo Bitch and then I discovered the show The Summer I Turned Pretty, which I think when I was watching it, it was actually on season two, waiting for season three because I gotta say it y'all. Apparently I think this show is based off of a book and from what I've understood, the season two doesn't follow the book and I wasn't satisfied with season two, I'll just say it. There's parts that I really like, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The Summer I Turned Pretty, it's this girl who grew up basically raised by boys, okay? She had her mom and her mom's best friend had this summer house that they would go to every year, and she was raised by her mother's friend's brothers and her brother, and one year she shows up, you know, she's hit puberty, she's looking cute, and she finally can make moves on the boy that she's had a crush on for every summer since she was a kid. It's drama, let me tell you, it is drama, and there's a lot of things that I don't love. Like, <laughs> I love the first season. The first season is really, really good. And the second season is still good. Everybody seems more mature outfit wise, not maturity level wise. Um, <laughs> but the second season, there's a lot of sadness and there's a lot of drama, but everybody's dressed real good. Okay. <laughs> and the romance, it's, mm. I'll just say it. I don't know if it's on my favorites list because I like it, but it's on my favorites list because I need to know what happens. Do you know what I mean? I can't wait to find out more. I have my biases, okay? I have the things that I want to happen. I've had things that have happened and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? But you know what, it's so real for that. It, the show's messy, just like real life. <laughs> but it has its cringy moments too. I feel like all romantic TV shows nowadays, especially when they're like millennial, you know what I mean? Like when, whenever they're like kind of woke, they're a little cringy, but it's good. I like it a lot. 
I'm excited for season three whenever it comes out. Oh, and it's one of those casts where everybody's good looking. Do you know what I mean? Like, you could just watch the show just because everybody's good looking. Oh, wait, and I forgot one of the best parts. The main character's mom's name is Laurel. That never happens. There's never anyone named Laurel in shows, except there was once on Love Island. She was pretty okay. But there was a Laurel in something else, and I was like, oh, she's giving Laurels a bad name. Ooh, okay. So this is for the horror people. You've probably seen it, though. But if you haven't checked out Yellow Jackets on Amazon, it's so good, guys. It's so good. Season one is perfect. When I say perfect, I mean it made me sad. It made me hopeful. It made me confused. It made me laugh. It made me bawl my eyes out. It made me uneasy in the same way that Nope made me feel uneasy. I'm getting sidetracked here, but Nope is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's not for everybody, but one of the reasons I love it so much is because there's like two scenes that will stick with me for the rest of my life. They made me feel fear in a way I didn't know I could feel fear, and it didn't feel like fear that I know. It was uneasy, it was dread, it was horrible. Yellow Jackets did that to me too. But it's not a scary show. And I need to iterate that. To anybody that is like really like on the edge of horror and they don't feel like they can watch horror, this might be a good show for you to try because it's not horror all the time, it's mostly drama. Yellow Jackets is about a soccer team in high school named Yellow Jackets who made like regionals or you know like you know the big competition at the end of the year. I don't know sports. <laughs> and they're flying across the country to get there and their plane crashes and they are stuck somewhere for like a year and a half, I believe. But it's it's not just about their journey stuck on this like island or wherever they are. It also flashes forward to them now as adults, the ones who have survived. The storytelling is brilliant. It doesn't reveal anything too quickly, and it really makes you feel things. But it's so good. And if you liked Lost, it gives Lost vibes, but gayer. Because it's all women. There's like two or three boy characters. The rest are women, and it's awesome. It's so gay. It's so fruity. Season two is still good. It's just season one was just perfect. You know what I mean? But I just love it a lot, and I think... Two of my favorite like older actresses who I've kind of grown up with because I saw them in stuff like Whip It or <laughs> Two and a Half Men because that was a show my parents used to watch. These two actresses, I, I just, they kill it. They absolutely kill it. This actor as well, who is in Santa Clarita Diet, they kill it as well. They're so good in the show, literally so good. And this actress, oh my gosh, she's in the new Scream films. She's incredible in this too. Literally, it's such a good cast. It's genuinely such a good cast. Great script, great show. Anyway, I'm really hoping for a season three. I'm really, I'm really rearing for a season three, but I liked it so, so much. Oh my God, how could I forget Christina Ricci? How could I forget Christina Ricci? She is a marvel in this show. I like everything she's in, truly, everything. She plays the worst character ever, but I can't stop loving it because her performance is magnificent. Ugh, so good. So good. On my birthday, July 21st, 2023, the Barbie movie came out. And guys, this movie was life-changing for me. And I am not exaggerating. And I know I'm not alone in that, okay? I hated, hated that I couldn't talk about this movie when it came out. It's actually so infuriating that I couldn't talk about it because I would get to watch all these stupid brain-dead takes from the male experience seeing that film and people calling it propaganda and liberal whatever. I truly knew that there were going to be especially men who wouldn't understand it and would be offended, but it only proves the point of the movie. It is about girlhood, womanhood. And Billie Eilish's song really just like put a ribbon on the cake at the end of it. God, it's, it's such a perfect film. And when I was watching it, there's you know two big beautiful scenes where you know, we're spending this whole movie laughing, having a good time. The whole first, like, 20 minutes about learning about all these characters is so fun. And then all of a sudden, Barbie has existential dread for the first time in her life. It's still fun, but there's these two big moments where, one, there are no lines. If I'm remembering correctly, there's no lines, but so much is said. And you could just hear the whole theater turn silent, and everybody's holding their breath. And I'm holding my breath because I'm, I'm holding back sobs. 
And that second moment, this big, beautiful monologue, again, I'm holding back sobs because nothing has ever made me feel so validated and motivated and angry and sad and tired and heard and understood in my whole life. And bro, I wanted to just sob in the theater and I couldn't. It just, it felt like it would have been too rude. You know, the theater was so quiet. You could tell that so many people were so affected by that beautiful monologue. If you haven't seen it yet, know that you're gonna have a good time, but it's going to touch you in your bones and in your soul. What a perfect film. And if you haven't experienced girlhood and you don't understand the movie, please watch it again and really listen to the women. Try to see it from their perspective and understand that nothing from the female perspective was dramatized. Nothing. Not the catcalling, not the being talked over, not the sexualizing, not any of it. I think the most beautiful thing about the movie, and this, this might be spoiler territory, so if you haven't seen the film yet, I'm gonna put a timestamp here. But one of the most beautiful things to me about this movie is that we get to see how the government is if it's all women leading and how we're not taking away from the men. We're just doing what we wanna do and it's beautiful and it's happy and it's peaceful. But when it's men leading, we're taking away from women. We want peace, but they want power. And it's not, it's just not the same. And we've lived in a world of patriarchy. So we've seen it, we have proof of it. What a beautiful film. Anyway, the movie's about Barbie dolls and what it's like to be a woman. A disclaimer, because I feel like maybe some people will be confused. I have talked about my gender identity on this channel. I don't identify as a woman, but I still was raised like one. And I've still experienced girlhood and womanhood because that's how I am to this day still perceived on a daily basis by people who don't know me. I'm Demi Girl. Feel free to look that up and, you know, ma decide what that is to you. I think that labels don't really actually make sense for me, but that's the closest one I've found for me. And that's why sometimes I'm like, I am a woman. And other days I'm like, nah, I'm not a woman. Don't call me that. Life is too short to put yourself in a damn box. You know what I mean? Barbie is probably one of my favorite movies of all time now. Okay, the last thing in July um, is an anime. We really have a spread of all different kind of things, huh? When Mara, Bestie, was here for my birthday, we spent a lot of the time like chilling and watching stuff because I was exhausted. I had been working, overworking myself like months leading up to my birthday. So we just chilled, right? And she introduced me to Chainsaw Man. I know when this was coming out with new episodes, I feel like it was like one of the most talked about shows at the time. So I'm a little late on the wagon. But oh my God, it's so good. And it's so kink coded. <laughs> Chainsaw Man is another series where the main character dies in the first episode and then, you know, all of a sudden things change and they got a chip on their shoulder and they got shit. But like the only motivator for this man is that he's horny. And you know what? That's so real. <laughs> And if it were a live action show, I think I'd hate it. But there's something about it being an anime where I'm like, it's endearing, it's not endearing. I, I love and hate the lead. I love and hate the lead. But the women, the women in the show are, God, the women in the show are so dummy mommy. And you know what? I'm not afraid to admit that I probably wouldn't like the show if it wasn't kink coded. It's so kinky. <laughs> Are you gonna be my pup? Are you gonna be my dog? Calling him good boy and putting a fucking collar on him? Like, are you kidding me? Like, what is going on? I need to rewatch the show. Also, the music is banger. The theme song is so good. I jam to it like once every few days because it's such a good song. My Stray Kids boys love Chainsaw Man, which is only a plus. Literally, I love the show. There's only one thing that I, I cannot stand and it's the fact that the, the male lead at some point, he doesn't know how old he is and he says that he thinks he's 16. And the show is so kinky. Everybody else is adults. And there's a very specific episode that just could have been a really sexy episode if everybody was adults. 
But we find out he's 16, and then that episode happens. Like, one after another. In my head canon, he's, he's an adult. I'm like, he said he thinks he's 16, so I'm going to believe that maybe he just doesn't know his age. And he's an adult. Because that's the only way I can be okay with it, truly. Anime has its quirks, you know? And there's things that I feel like we get past. We just have to kind of ignore and get past. But there's some people who don't ignore it and take it seriously and are okay with it. Anyway, if it wasn't for the fact that the main lead is 16, I think it'd be one of my favorite animes. Like, it's just so good. It's so good. And it keeps you on the edge of the, your seat. Like, nothing is sacred. It's like Attack on Titan, where, like, Nothing is sacred. The stakes are very high and horny. <laughs> if you guys watched my, my last favorites video, you know that I had a terrible August. I didn't watch anything in August either. There's nothing, it's just, it's just empty. I had nothing for August, probably because I was just watching K-pop stuff on YouTube, so. Two of my favorite medias I've ever seen in my life came out during the strike. Barbie movie and then in September, in September, the first ever live action of an anime that was spectacular. One Piece on Netflix. They took the longest running anime and turned it into a live action. And all the actors are so perfectly cast. Like, perfect. They look like the characters. They know the characters like the back of their hands. Emily, who plays Nami, was a huge fan of One Piece before she was even cast. And you can tell, okay? She carries that show. Not that it needs to be carried because everybody in this is incredible. Okay, Zoro, fine as hell, so perfect for his character. Sanji, are you kidding me? This man is unreal. If anything, he might make Sanji a little bit too likable, okay? Then we've got Luffy, which is, he, it's like he was born Luffy. He is Luffy. He's Luffy. I don't know. And I have to say this disclaimer. I had never seen One Piece before the live action. And I know that's blasphemy usually. But I think a lot of people were introduced to One Piece through the live action because it is the longest running anime of all time and it's still running. And so to me, it's never seemed accessible. I'm always like, it's just there's too much. That's a lot of work, you know, like even Hunter Hunter, I never finished. I've always wanted to. I'm interested. But this live action made it all accessible because it's, it's so good. And I didn't know how wholesome the show was. It's pirates, but they're wholesome. It's pirates, but they're like good people, kind of. They've, you know, they've got their, their moments. Usopp. How did I forget Usopp? Okay, that man. Okay. I don't know. Like, literally, I'm, I can't even get my words together because... I liked it so much and I had so much to say when it came out and now I feel like I, I'm so overwhelmed because I want to talk about it so bad but I don't know what to say because I don't know where to start. I've rewatched it three times. Just so good. And because of it, I've started watching the anime. The live action was so well done. You could tell that everybody really cared about the product of the show and knew their characters and knew what needed to be done with every shot and every episode. Of course, like, there's, there's gonna be some silly makeup and hair, but that's anime, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it was so good, guys, it's so good, and I literally follow every person on Instagram now because it's just so good. Anyway, if you've ever, like, thought about watching the anime, I honestly would never say this about any other anime ever because every other live action that's ever come out, if it's good, it's still not good enough for you to be like, yeah, watch the live action first. But I feel like we all get a little pass with this one because it's so good. I'm so excited for there to be more. I'm like really, I'm not positive there's going to be more, but there better be. I will not be okay if there's not more. Okay, in October, I didn't watch as much as I'd like to because honestly, I was working so much. There's a lot of movies I wanted to see in October that I didn't. But I did get a chance to watch Boogeyman. One of the reasons I was excited to watch it is because the female lead is an actress in Yellow Jackets as well. My favorite character in Yellow Jackets, in fact. So I was like, I have to watch Boogeyman. I have to. What I will say is I think it would have been way more fun to watch in theaters. I think that some movies are just, there's so much atmosphere that needs to be atmosphering. You know what I mean? I think it had the potential to be horrifying if I had watched it in a movie theater. In my house, it just like didn't 
do that for me. But I did catch myself like looking at my phone a little bit because there were moments where I was like, okay, wait, actually I'm a little, I'm a little eked out. I'm a little eked out. But there's a little girl. She's one of the main characters. Her acting's incredible. There's moments where you're frustrated at other characters because you're like, just listen to your fucking daughter, dude. But it's good, especially if you're scared of the dark. It's a very good movie if you're scared of the dark. I liked the story. I don't know if I was at the edge of my seat enough for my liking, but I do think that it's worth a watch. Okay, the last thing on my list is actually a show I haven't finished yet. I have two more episodes left, so no spoilers, just in case I post this and I still haven't finished, please and thank you. But in October, Netflix came out with the series Fall of the Ushers, which is made by Mike Flanagan. And if you guys haven't seen any of his shows, they're killer. They're fantastic. I feel like they're what American Horror Story wanted to be. <laughs> but I'll say it, guys. Ushers has been my favorite of all of them. I think that they, they keep getting better and better and better. Midnight Mass didn't do it for me. I was a little bored, mainly because Midnight Mass is so ingrained in religion. And I didn't have a religious upbringing. I went to church like twice, you know, so like nothing really spoke to me with it. But the other two of his that I'd seen were House on Haunting Hill, ha Haunted House on Hill House, Haunting on Hill House. Not me thinking of the board game. Great movie, child actors, adult actors, perfect casting, beautiful shots, some of the most beautifully cinematic shots. One of my favorite episodes in television history because it, there's an episode that is literally only four shots because they're all scenes that are one shot, like incredible. One of the best feats in television history, in my opinion. And then there was Blind Manor, which was my favorite of all of what he's made so far until now, The Fall of the Ushers. Fall of the Ushers is fun, okay? And eerie. Remember what I said about Yellow Jackets, how there was a scene that made me feel fear in a way I didn't know I felt fear? This one did that too. In like maybe the first or second episode, which is incredible. With this show, you've got a rich family who has their secrets. They're very famous and people are trying to oust them. There is a lawsuit and during the lawsuit, someone says that there is a spy, there's a leak. So the father of the family turns them all against each other by saying, find out who the leak is and I'll give you a shit ton of my money, basically. And then all of a sudden, everybody starts dying. All of the children, one by one, start dying. It's Mike Flanagan, so it's paranormal, and it's freaky, and there's some crazy jump scares. The cast is incredible. I mean, it's got a lot of the same faces we know from other stuff, but I love most of those people. I don't know why I said most, I, I really do, I like all of them. The movie is filled with Edgar Allan Poe references. I don't know how many people have noticed that, but there's, uh, as a girly who like loved, like hyper fixated on the telltale heart, y'all, like that was crazy, okay? It's crazy, it's so good. There's Ravens, Mark Hamill's in it. I don't know, dude, like it's, it's a stellar cast. Edgar Allan Poe references, beautifully shot, cool storytelling. I'm so excited to see how it ends. I have my theories, but I'm really excited to see how it ends. One thing that I think Mike Flanagan does really well is he has really strong female characters. It's like, a, it's a millionaire like sibling, like power team, right? But the sister is like the mind, the brains of all of it. He also came out with a movie years ago called Hush with his wife and um, my favorite Broadway actor and singer, John Gallagher Jr., where there's a woman who is deaf, who is like living alone and being terrorized all night by a killer. And he's terrorizing her in ways that like, you know, you couldn't really do if she could hear. But Mike Flanagan is so good at making strong female leads. And I hate to give men credit on stuff like that, not because men don't do their research or whatever, but like at the end of the day, like they don't have the experience, you know? It is interesting to me to see men do it well when they don't have the experience. And maybe it's because they're a team, him and his wife, because she's in all of his work. But I just, I really, really enjoy the show. Really enjoy the show, really enjoy his work. The only one that didn't speak to me was, had nothing to do with him. It was just like, I'm just not religious. 
you know? Anyway, that's my whole entire list of the stuff I couldn't talk about during the SAG strike. If I'm honest, there's probably more and I just forgot to write them down. But I would love to hear if you guys have seen any of these or if any of my recommendations have caused you to want to watch them. Let me know in the comment section below and tell me your favorite movie and television show right now in this moment in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching stuff like this. This is some of my favorite content because I just love talking about my special interests. You know what I mean? And if you guys vibe with any of my content, if you watch this whole video and you didn't leave a like, consider doing so. And maybe hit that subscribe button. You can hit the bell button so you can get notified when I post new videos. We're out here doing K-pop stuff, hyperfixation stuff, gratitude and self-care and vlogging. And right now I'm at the peak of I'm just loving making content on YouTube. So if you just wanna see me enjoying life and doing my own thing and really indulging in my special interests, I would love to have you as a subscriber here, but also consider following me on all my other social medias, okay? I post pretty much every day on Instagram and I live stream on Twitch. We're not always playing games. Sometimes we're just sitting and talking and chatting. We've actually been doing body doubling lately, which has been really, really nice or like, parallel play whatever you call it I call it body doubling but it's been really nice like you guys get some work done I get some work done we just hang out and chill and don't forget guys I have merch in my own shop that's all super pretty cool and my bestie who designs my merch her shop is also open and you can go check out her merch as well I'm done plugging I'm done talking I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you for the next one on the YouTubes. Night skaters. Let's watch good TV and movies together, friends. Pow, pow.